Hi, and welcome to the Racial Introductions podcast. From ancient Greece to branding, globalisation to Homer, and logic to fashion, we'll showcase a concise and dynamic insight into a range of diverse topics for wherever your curiosity may lead you. So here is today's very short introduction. I'm David Gerber, a professor of history at the State University of New York at Buffalo, now a senior research fellow in history at that institution, because though I teach occasionally, I am formally retired. I am the author of the title American Immigration in the Very Short Introduction series. Originally published in 2011, this imprint is about to be published in a second edition. As the title suggests, the book is about immigration to the United States. But since the history of international population movement to this part of North America began before the USA was created in 1789, it was decided to give the broader title of American, though other parts of the Western Hemisphere certainly have claims to call themselves American as well. The book is not about all population movements to the United States. It is about those peoples and groups who sought more or less voluntarily to migrate. Involuntary migrants, such as principally the African victims of the slave trade, cannot be considered immigrants, nor can those incorporated into the territory of the United States by war or conquest or annexation, such as indigenous Native Americans and 19th century Mexican Americans. My book seeks to narrate and analyze three different issues that arise from this subject. First, the history of laws and policies that have facilitated or inhabited international migration to the United States, mirroring public opinion and political movements engaged with the subject, the United States has seen cycles of support for and opposition to international migration throughout its history. These are reflected in laws and policies that set the boundaries in which immigration has taken shape. Though often fashioning itself as a land of immigrants, that concept has never been broadly endorsed throughout time. Second, the book traces the waves of international population movements to the United States and the experiences of individuals and groups embarking on immigration, principally from Europe, Asia, and the Western Hemisphere locations, especially Mexico, the populous neighbor to the South, which shares a nearly 2,000-mile border with the USA. There have been several major waves of immigration in the mid-19th century, mostly from Northern and Western Europe, in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, mostly from Southern, Central, and Eastern Europe, and on the west coast of the United States from East Asia. And finally, most recently, since a major revision in the immigration laws in 1965, which ended some historical discriminations and quotas against Asians and some Europeans. The most recent wave is creating a demographic shift in the character and composition of the American people that is being played out in ideological and political conflicts in the last decades of the 20th century and for first decades of this century. The reason being that the revision of the laws in 1965 led to tremendous immigration of non-European peoples from Asia, the Western Hemisphere, and other locations. Third, my book juxtaposes international migration with formulations of and conflicts over American national identity. It seeks to interrogate the claims of both the political right and the political left about what is, quote, the real America, end quote. The real America, this formulation, is an expressive rhetorical symbol often used when characterizing American diversity. It's one favored at times, for example, by the new president, Joe Biden. For those mostly on the political right, who favor a culturally and in some formulations racially homogeneous population, the real America is culturally European and specifically Anglo-American in origin. The country is a branch of Western civilization that speaks English, is Christian, and possesses the manners and morals associated with the Protestant ethic. In other words, self-help, individualism, dependence on family before community in the state. Immigrants are expected and urged to adopt the behaviors and attitudes conducive to the preservation of this model, America. In sharp contrast for those mostly on the left who favor diversity and heterogeneity, the real America is an amalgam of everyone and every culture and ethnic identity that has taken root in the United States. Unity is based on the accommodation of difference and a civic ethos that favors state, community, and mutual support across the lines of cultural divisions. 
Now, these are, of course, very broad generalizations. And on close inspection, they require a lot of nuance to account for variations on both themes. But it is my view that there is a remarkable consistency in this contention between formulations of homogeneity and heterogeneity throughout the two and a half centuries of American national existence. Much of the bitter ideological and political division that exists in the United States today in 2021 is at its foundation rooted in this duality regarding the so-called real America. Talk of the contemporary American problems with immigration as a reality as an issue suggest why it is that a second edition of my book seemed at this time to be worthwhile and necessary in the context of the already vast literature of American immigration. For a literate audience that wants to keep informed, VSI books with their insistence on getting to the heart of matters quickly and efficiently, and the concise taught writing that such economy requires, VSI books are an ideal way to keep informed about current developments in the learned disciplines and in the world around us, and in the connection between the disciplines and the world around us. A great deal has happened in the last decade in the United States regarding immigration. The intense politicization of the subject at both the partisan and ideological levels is the most obvious product of these developments. Looking at my first edition, especially since the election of Donald Trump in 2016, it was obvious an update of the first edition was needed. It is not an exaggeration to say that of all the issues Trump succeeded in putting forward in his remarkable victory in 2016, immigration was the most potent. He successfully folded into immigration many of the sources of anxiety that have haunted a good part of the American electorate in recent decades. These sources are economic displacement of vast segments of the traditional working class due to deindustrialization, the demographic decline of the Euro-American white population, the poorest southwestern border and the growth of illegal immigration, equaling about 11 million people at this point in time, violent crime, fear of terrorism, and the decline of Christian devotionalism. Some of his actions as president, such as the deportation of illegal immigrants, had begun in earnest under President Barack Obama. But to these uh, actions, Trump added some dramatic executive action, a ban on immigration from a number of Muslim-majority nations, the militarization of the federal border patrol in the Southwest, a wall to prevent border jumping along that same border, threats to the resident status of the so-called dreamers, these are illegal residents brought into the country as small children who have spent their entire lives in the United States, but whose legal status is regarded as dubious. And finally, withdrawing federal funds and resources from states and localities that sought to protect illegal residents from harassment and deportation. And to these, we might add perhaps the most emotional of the issues and the most photographic that captured public imagination the separating and dividing of families of those seeking to enter the country in mass at the southwestern border, which led children to be separated from their parents, some to this same point in time. It might be too much to say that Trump was at war with immigrants, because the status of those legally in the country was more or less untouched. Moreover, Trump called for a broadening of quotas for the immigration of skilled workers, such as those in high-tech fields. And this had long been advocated by those wanting more and those wanting less immigration. But Trump sent unmistakably unambiguous signals about who was to be welcomed and rejected in the future. And he gained political capital with large portion of the electorate with this message. These developments needed to be addressed in a second edition of my book. And so too did the fact that they pointed to there has been no comprehensive reform of American immigration laws since the 1983 and partly the 1990 federal legislation. This is a subject in desperate need of being addressed in its entirety for the first time in decades. But so too is the undeniable upside of America's immigration narrative. The increase in the integration of millions of the post-1965 immigration law immigrants into American society. Immigrants, including the illegal and undocumented immigrants, are paying taxes to support programs that benefit native residents and newcomers alike. 
helping to revive cities that had been flattened economically by deindustrialization and population decline. They are buying homes, they are starting businesses, they're sending their children off to school and to college, and they are doing essential work to the American community, something that was clear and has been clear in the examples of the thousands of foreign-born nurses, doctors, and health-related professionals whose work during the 2020 and now the 2021 pandemic has been featured in the media and in the journalistic press. On close examination, as the book takes pain to argue, much of the anxiety about assimilation into American society has turned out to be a vast exaggeration. For many Americans, new Americans, the American dream has turned out to be as real as it was for their precursors in the 19th and early 20th century. As they reach out to fulfill the aspirations they brought with them as immigrants, they serve their interests and societies simultaneously. At its foundation, my book argues that throughout American history, immigration has been good for the immigrants and good for America, and that the country's distinctive record of integration of perhaps as many as 100 million people throughout its history has been one of its distinctive successes as a nation. Thank you for listening to the Very Short Instructions podcast. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify and Stitcher to receive new episodes directly to your podcast feed. All of our episodes, new and old, can also be found on SoundCloud and YouTube at OUP Academic. Thank you.